Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! You want a minion hat? You want to get the minion I get the minion hat. You don't get the minion hat. Assholeconsulting.com. Go there if you have questions and you don't know. I don't know. Don't trust your parents, politicians, teachers, or anyone else has been lying to you for the past two decades. Ah, oh, they got it. Yeah. Follow their advice. See where you end up. Follow an asshole's advice. You'll, uh, you'll, you'll maybe end up marginally better. Uh, hello, Aaron. I apologize for the long post, but I intend to pay... You to make a video and make it worth your time. You're a great speaker and I enjoy listening to your advice on a daily basis. I'm a bit of a unique situation. I'm a 19-year-old male living with my parents in America. I am not one of these young punks who has no direction and is doing nothing with their life. I'm, I am a dedicated individual looking to advance myself as far as possible in life. And I need some advice. Ever since I can remember, I have always been a successful person. At the age of 16, I enrolled at my local community college through a free dual enrollment program that allowed me to acquire 55 college credits with the intention of transferring to a university for free. Guys, young high school kids, capitalize on that shit. I mean, go to college if you can. Fuck marching band. Fuck football. Fuck whatever clubs or social activities you're doing at school. Go right from high school, go to college. Matter of fact, what I would say, fuck your high school homework, do your college homework. That's what I would do. And then uh, you will come out way ahead. Uh, I have held a full-time job since that age, mostly in fast food. At 18, I became a manager of a small local business with a few employees, and all was well. I applied to the nearest ABE, a T, accredited university for electrical engineering, and got accepted without a problem due to good state test scores. However, since my household income is above 150000 150, I get no help from the government, grants, etc. My parents, although they make good money, have saved zero dollars for my education and love to buy material goods such as motorcycles, houses, new cars, etc. <laughs> and thus, their contribution would have been essentially zero. I canceled that plan and quit my job at the small business. I recently got a new job as an engineering assistant at a manufacturing company five miles from my house. Disregarding my job title, I would say I do about 40% data entry growing. Yeah, I don't care what they're doing. They, they every job everybody ever has, I don't care if they call you an engineer. You, you do shit work. Even when I was vice president, I did shit work. That's all it is because it's all shit work. The CEO, he's about the only guy that ever make, actually maybe does any kind of leading or like stuff you've been trained to do. But every, every entry and medium level position you could do in the eighth grade. And the rest is actively helping with the design and engineering process of making machine. Well, that's good. I do a lot of 3D modeling and material studies, problem solving, and finding new ways to improve existing machinery. This is great. I got a professional certification for SolidWorks, the program that we use to model, to have a bit more skin in the game. And I absolutely love what I do and could not see myself doing anything else. I'm trying to find out where there's a problem, except for your parents going to hit you up for money later on because they're baby boomer Gen X fucks. <clears throat> I am really learning a lot and I'm enjoying every day I work. In my interview, a contract was mentioned. So I'm hoping that my employer will offer me a deal where they pay for X amount of my schooling if I come back to work for them for X amount of years after school. I'm building a portfolio to present to them after the first year of school to showcase the skills I have acquired since I do not have a formal degree. I've taken a lot of classes relating to alternative energy, circuits, machine design, welding, and my father is a millwright. So I also get to learn the actual manufacturing process of building machines for free. Oh, this is good. I'm putting 100% of my energy in this field and have been for at least three months and I'm feeling better than ever. I'm also making good money for my age. I get paid $15 an hour for 401k, blah, blah, blah. Jesus fucking Christ, get to your point. My question to you is, what is a fair ratio of dollars for school versus time after work. It won't be until fall until I can go to school, so I feel that the experience I'm getting now and the skills I have after school will make me a very valuable employee, and thus I should have more negotiating power. Uh, so the ratio between dollars, school, and time after work. All right, I would actually kind of put, I mean, a general ratio is a third, a third, a third. Uh, I would only, and I would be putting... I'd be doing kind of the opposite of what people recommend. Get school all the way. Get da, da, da. Again, there's no rush to graduate from school. You're already at a company doing real work. And that is, I'd, I'd say, just as valuable as school. 
So I would almost put more emphasis on the company that you're working at. Like, I don't know what your hours are, but if, if they say we want you to work 20 hours, you work 20 hours. If they want you to work 30 hours, you work 30 hours. You make that, I wouldn't go much above 30 hours though. You make that money, you make sure nothing, you know, you're not, you're not starving. And then you go to school part time. And then after work, I'd say in your youth, you know, don't social. Yeah, I mean, have some social life, but you're not you're not here to have social life. OK, you're if you're going to go to school, you're here to improve yourself and then you afford your social life later when you're making big coin. So I would almost put social life last, like, you know, have a day off a week, maybe Sunday you have off or Saturday you have off. But I would focus primarily on school and work, splitting those two equally. Um, and not worrying if you don't go to school full time. Now this may affect scholarships or something like that. I don't know if you got scholarships, but even then, the the fact you're getting real world experience related to your field, and only forty percent of it is data entry. That's awesome. I would hold on to that. They seem to like it. You seem to be very happy there, and this could become a, a an employer after you graduate. I would then also go to school in between part and full time. Um, don't push it. If your grades start to suffer or you start to burn out, scale back on school, okay? Because you have all the time in the world to graduate and you have an employer lined up if they keep employing you. So <clears throat> I would, um, you know, make sure you're getting your grades and if it, if it takes you five years to graduate or six years to graduate, so what? Like, like, like they're going to, oh God, you graduated when you were 24, not 22. No one ever says that. No one ever says that. And if anyone asks, well, why did it take you so long to graduate? So well, I was working on this entire time in the field. But the, but the big thing is you're, you already got what most college graduates wish they had. And that is a job in their field doing work that's related to their field. And they're happy. That is so rare. So I would definitely put that kind of number one, school number two, a very close number two, and then your social life after that. Um... Uh, so I have a feeling that between fall I graduate from school, so I feel like this. Second question is, if they don't want to send me to school, how should I go about sending myself to school? Well, you pay for it. That's the whole. I mean, hey, if they want to pay you and they got tuition reimbursement, awesome. But if they don't, they don't have to pay your way through college. Bunch of little, you know, desperate people are paying their own way through college. You still got a great thing going on there. Uh, so how should I go about sending yourself to school? You pay for it yourself. Maybe you have to take out loans, but you gotta do like everyone else does. You gotta, you gotta do that. But if you go to school, you know, if you're working more than you go to school, you should be able to afford it or take out very little in debt. So I think you, you'll have that there. At the current rate I'm saving, I should have close to ten thousand saved up before my first day in school. Although this isn't much compared to the total cost. I can't get much in loans in my own name since I don't have a lot of collateral. No, you apply for FAFSA. This is where you apply for student aid. Okay, go. Have you applied for student aid? FAFSA. I think it's FAFSA. Let me double check. It's been so long. FAFSA. FAFSA.ed.gov. There you go. Fill it out. Get your student aid, dude. That's that's how you're gonna do it. Um, and then if you don't get any student aid, you can't get a loan. Well, then you know you you go to school as much as you can with the money you have. That's that's how you afford college. Uh, and then, like, maybe ask the boss, say, look, I'd like more money for college, but I can't become an engineer any faster because I don't have the money. But I think you should be able to handle it. Uh, so then I'm going to pay for both loan in both my parents and own name, which they can't afford. Yeah, your parents are going to become a liability. I, you know what? You're on your own. You really are on your own. And, and I'll tell you this, right? Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice. When your parents ask you how you're doing, or any of your family members are asking you how you're doing, you're doing marginal. You're barely getting by. You barely have anything. I don't care if you make $150,000. Don't let them know you got money. Your parents are fucking scum as far as I'm concerned, blowing and pissing away all. one hundred fifty grand a year and they, they, they don't have anything. They can't even lend money. I mean, they don't have uh, savings. Uh, that's, yeah, you look out for them. They're going to be a liability in your future. <clears throat> I know you advise work uh, working while in school, but engineering school is extremely rigorous and I prefer to have 100% of my time focusing on schoolwork. Yeah, I, I know you prefer that, but you I would not give up that job. I think that job is the vehicle by which you're going to solve all your problems. May not be solved as quickly as you'd like. I know you'd like to graduate in four years, but tough shit. That's not, that doesn't look like that's going to happen. Looks like your parents are going to offer jack shit in terms of help. If anything, they've torpedoed any kind of, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, grants or scholarships you're going to get so you're going to have to go for student loans so fill out that FAFSA thing <clears throat> but if that if you don't get any of that 
you're going to have to work and pay off. Work comes first. You need the money. Money is the oil, the lifeblood by which everything else operates. You don't have that. Everything else is a question of, it's an academic question. It's a theoretical question. It won't matter. So that's what I would do. Focus number one on that job. That looks great. I would see if you can work full time there. Um, take as much schooling as time permits and your finances permit. And fuck social life. I mean, have a social life, but dude, you ain't missing out on much. You know, go to your fucking parties, get drunk, go through the fucking rigmarole. But yeah, that's what I would do. So anyway, you're on the right path. You got it, kid. Toodles.